Hi guys, it's Carolyn and I'm very excited today because I'm going to be showing you how to make the Madison dress. If you like the look of the dress then log on to the website www.carolynbaxter.co.uk where you can buy the pattern, follow the video tutorial and make your very own. You need three different materials for this dress. Keep them all in the same colour tone. For this dress you will need a nice fabric. Now I'm using this kind of cotton, quite thick fabric. A chiffon, now this is a silk chiffon but silk chiffon is quite hard to work with um, but this is for the train so you can find something similar and the similar or same colour as your other fabric. You also need a lining and again I'm keeping the colours the same. You need some poppers or velcro, now um, it's up to you if you want to choose poppers or velcro to attach the train. I'm using these little poppers here, they just sew on. And you also need a trim for your waistband, so I'm using some studs. You also need an invisible zip in the same colour as your colour scheme. You need your sewing machine and your overlocker. Now the overlocker stops the edges from fraying inside the dress. Um, I always use an overlocker, but some of you that don't have an overlocker might choose just to leave the edges. Start off by cutting out all your pattern pieces. The ones which say cut in the fold, you fold over the fabric, place the pattern piece and then cut around it. This means that you get a mirror image when you open it up. Like so. The pattern pieces that aren't cut on the fold can be folded over and cut out the full way around and this will give you two pattern pieces, mirror images of each other. And this is what you should have now when they're all laid out. Next up I'm overlocking all the edges of my pattern pieces. This stops them from fraying. I'm going to start off by sewing the bottom front of the dress. I'm taking panel 3 and placing it face down on to the middle panel 4. I'm then going to pin it all the way up that seam, preparing it to sew. So once pinned, you'll be sewing it down that seam. I'm now doing the same with the other panel at the other side, pinning it in place in preparation to sew. This is the top pattern pieces now, which I'm going to be doing the same to, placing good sides facing each other and pinning in place. Now it's time to move on to pinning the back. We're starting off with the back and bottom pieces and we're going to be pinning them all the way up this seam. So this is one side. Now do the same with the other side of the back. This is what you should have now. I'm going to take these two back panels and fold them over so that they're good sides facing each other. I'm then going to mark six inches down and mark with a pin. This is where the zip is going to be inserted. I'm then going to sew from the pin right down to the hem. Now it's time to move on to the top back. Again, good sides facing each other and pin down that seam and the same with the other side. Now once I've sewn down these seams, I'm then going to press the seam open with the iron like so. This keeps it nice and flat and neat. I'm now taking the top front and the bottom front and I'm going to be sewing them together. So I'm placing them good sides facing each other and then pinning the seams all lined up 
I'm now going to sew these two pattern pieces together. As for the back, I'm going to do the exact same. Now, you have to remember that the zip is going to fit into the back seam, the seam running up the centre back, so that's going to be left open. But I'm pinning both the pattern pieces on and sewing along. Once I've sewn, I'm then going to press it all with the iron. Remember, you want to keep your seams neat, so keep pressing them as you go. Now it's time to attach the front and the back together, so place them face down, good sides facing each other, and pin all the way up the side seams. Now you're going to sew up these seams. Again, once you've sewn up the side seams, press them down with the iron. You should have something like this, the outside shell of the dress. And now you've done that, you're going to start cutting out the facing and the lining. Now you're going to use the pattern pieces that come in the kit and you're going to be cutting the facing out of the same fabric and you're going to be cutting the lining out of the lining fabric which is going to be the same colour as your outside fabric. I've cut out my pattern pieces and they look like this. Now you're going to take all of your facing and lining pieces and sew them together the same way as you did with the outside of the dress. Now remember, when you get to that back seam on the lining, you need to measure down 6 inches from the bottom lining pattern piece to leave the gap for the zip. You can then fold them over, good sides facing each other, and sew from the hem to where you've marked for the zip to be. Now you're going to sew the front and the back together down the side seams. Now that you have your lining like this, um, I've put my little label on there, which you can do too if you have one. And I've got my outside shell for the dress that looks like this. I have got an invisible zip. Now, mine's quite long um, because I just had one kicking about the house. But you're going to need one that fits into the gap at the back and I'm going to sew that in now to the outside shell part of your dress. Once you've got the zip in you should have something like this. Now it's time to attach the outer shell of the dress and the lining. You're going to take the lining this way round and place the outer shell of the dress inside like so. This way, both right sides are facing each other. I'm going to pin in place, lining up all the seams of the lining and the shell, pinning right atop, along the top and round to the back. Then I'm going to sew all the way around until I get to the zip. Now I'm going to take the scissors and snip three little snips into this area here. Now you're cutting these little notches so that when you turn it back inside out it presses nice and flat and neat. Now that I've sewn along the top of the shell and the lining right along here and I've snipped in this area here, um, I'm going to sew down here to attach the lining to the zip. So I'm going to make sure that I've lined up the seams on the outside and on the lining and I'm going to pin it all and now sew it to the back of the zip. Now I've sewn along the top and I've also sewn the lining to the back of the zip. I'm going to turn the whole dress inside out again and get the little corner at the top of the zip on both sides 
and just slice a little triangle off that. Be careful not to go too close to the stitching, but that just means that you're going to get more of a point at the back where the zip meets. And now I'm going to take it over to give it a good press. If you do that on both top parts of the zip, it means that you can press it to a nice point. Now it's time to focus on the hem. This is a lining and I'm going to be folding the outer shell of the dress round and attaching it to the lining. I'm going to be lining up all the seams in the lining and the shell of the dress to keep it nice and neat. And I'm pinning all the way around now. Now that you've turned it back through the little hole that you've left there, you should have something that looks like this and you're going to press it over. Um, this turns into like a facing. So this was the outside shell of the dress but it's folded over now um, so that you can't see the lining when you're wearing it. And once the dress is finished and you don't need to get inside the inside of the dress anymore, you can sew the little gap shut by hand. Now you've got your main dress finished, you could stop now and just add a trim, a sparkly trim. But I'm going to show you how to make and add this chiffon train. Take the band you're going to fold over a piece of fabric and place the waistband pattern piece down, pinning it in place. You're going to need two of these, so do this two times. Because you've folded it, when you take the paper pattern piece off and open it up, it should look like this. Now I'm going to do the exact same with a piece of interfacing as I'm going to iron this to the back of one of the waistbands. Make sure you get iron on interfacing. Now I've opened it up like that, I'm going to place it on the back of one of the waistbands and press with the iron. I've now got my piece of chiffon, which is silk chiffon that I'm working with. And I've cut it with the right length. So it's got a fit from the waist to the floor with the heels on. So that will be different for everybody. I will move it up and take and then cut it. Now, along the finished edges. unfinished edges. Now this is the edge that you're going to put into the waistband. So once you've roughly found the middle, mark it with a pin. Like so. Now I'm going to take my waistband and I'm going to take the chiffon. And I'm going to line the pins up together. And pin it in place in the middle. Now I'm going to work on fitting this into this side of the waistband 
and this into this side. Now this will involve some pleating so you can do it uniformly, a little pleat every two inches so that you can fit it into that area or just kind of do your own thing. At this edge and the other edge make sure you leave one centimetre overlap of the band so I've started the chiffon here. This is what one half is looking like just now, so I've put lots of little pleats down it. Um, now, if you can't be bothered doing this, you could just put the chiffon and cut it to the correct length of the waistband, but I want mine to have a little bit of floatingness through it, so that's why I've put all of these little pleats in. Now I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew half a centimetre into the waistband just to secure that right down there. Now I've done the pleats all along and secured them, I'm taking the other waistband and placing it on top face down, good side face down and sewing all the way along there. Also going to sew up the sides as well, one centimetre. Make sure you don't trap the chiffon. Now at each corner I'm going to snip a little bit off the edge again. This means that you can get a nice sharp point when you turn it inside out and press it. I'm turning it inside out and I'm going to press it with the iron. You might need to poke a little pair of scissors into that corner to get it nice and sharp. As for the top of the waistband, I'm folding over a centimetre on both sides and pressing it inside. This means that I can then hand sew or sew all the way along and close it off. It's time to embellish the waistband now. I'm going to add some pyramid studs. I'm hoping to add them kind of all the way along round the band, but you could add some sparkle trim if you wanted to. It's up to you. I'm going to attach my band with poppers, so I'm going to put the dress on and hold the band around my waist, marking where I would need to attach the poppers on. As you can see, I've lined the poppers up on both the dress and the train. This means that the train can come off to wash. All that's left to do now is to finish the hem on the train. Now the dress is complete, as a finishing touch I decided to dip dye the bottom. It's a really light faded turquoise colour. To buy the pattern for this dress in sizes 8 to 14 visit the website carolynbaxter.co.uk